the Hotel Montana looks like what was left of the Twin Towers after 9-11. And uh, it was about 10 stories that the place pretty much just came down to stories upon stories just pancaked on top of each other. Just, and no one wall. Of all the dudes that I know, man, that are able to take care of themselves, like wherever, it's hard to find people that can do that anymore, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, but by God, that dude could. And I just kept thinking, man, he was going to be the one guy who just showed up out of the blue, and, and the only reason nobody heard from him was because he was pulling other people out. And then I got on the phone that week. I had a conference call with all my team, all my business people, and everything. It was pretty evident uh, that amongst all of them that uh, they didn't really want to see me travel into Haiti at this point in time. So um, I kind of ended that conference call pretty quick and uh, then called back the two people that were on the conference call that I knew would be ready to go at a moment's notice. And um, we started planning, Ryan Steidel and um, uh, Dr. Marks. David Marks all met up with me. And uh, my brother flew in from the West Coast, met me here at three o'clock. We started gathering supplies. We packed all night long, never slept. Went to the airport again at 5 a.m. the next morning, flew into San Domingo. We slept on a floor in a man's warehouse that night. And um, left the next morning and to drive the next 30 minutes to the border where we hopped out of the bus, me and my uh, team, and proceeded to try to flag down a pickup or something that drives in. We found this one guy in a pickup and he's like, sure, you can hop in the back. So we're throwing our stuff in the back. Next thing you know, this, this other doctor comes rolling out of, a, out of another truck and he's dressed in his, his uh, you know, surgeon greens, his, and he's like, you will not ride in the back of that pickup truck, gringos. You'll be killed. And I just said to him, I'm not going to be killed. I'm going that way. And he was like, you know, stubborn, stubborn. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm going there. And there's the border right there. And he's, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I wait a minute and just sit there and tell all my guys, just hold your stuff, you know, don't move anything yet. Don't take the damn thing out of the back of that pickup truck. Because if that's all we got, that's what we're going in. And uh, next thing you know, two ambulances roll up, and opens the doors up, and tells us to get inside the ambulances. And there were Dominican ambulances that had been pulling people out, and then going back in the port of Prince to pull more people out. So he put my five people at that point in those two ambulances with everything else that's in those ambulances and uh, drove us uh, through Haiti, through, across the border through Haiti and into, uh, into Port-au-Prince, E.C. Man, it's like what I always like. I don't I have nothing in my lifetime to compare it to, really. Um, um, maybe when Japan was bombed, Hiroshima, something like that. Um, anyway, we made it through this this the city and to uh, the Hotel Montana and driving up into it and it's just rubble everywhere. A lot of streets are blocked off from rubble everywhere. I had obtained satellite images before I left. I had maps. Um, we had, uh, you know, everything from medical gear to search and gear to, um, pretty much everything that we could, I could sustain my people without having to be a burden on anything else and could help. And up until the day I left there, the ground was still shaking about three good times a day. The day I got there was the, the 6.0 quake hit. That's a lot. That's a crazy feeling. And I rolled up to the site and I got out, immediately saw uh, Fairfax County on the back of a dude's um, vest. Uh, that's my guy. And I, 
uh, my team that we had on the ground had had to move out that morning. So we were, it took us too long to get there. So we didn't cross where they were able to transfer information to us other than what we did by email. So these guys had gone and we were the second team in there specifically um, to find Walt, but also specifically to help in any way that we could. So I went up to the guy from Fairfax and I said, hey, Fairfax County. I went, Culpepper, Culpepper, Virginia. And all those guys, it was, uh, it was Virginia, the Fairfax County met Fairfax County, Virginia, which is my home state. And uh, these are all of the men of Virginia Task Force One, which is the number one call world search and rescue team. Meaning when any catastrophe happens anywhere in the world, they're the first ones called by the UN. So I go up to this fellow, he turns around and, uh, I, and I, you know, introduce myself. Hey, I'm from Virginia. I'm from Virginia. Um, I am Big Kenny. I got a friend here. He immediately was just in, incredibly professional and respectful and, and awesome. And he grabbed one of his other commanders and they proceeded to walk me over the entire site, show me everything that they had done over the past five days, uh, showed me all the tunneling they'd done, directed me into the tunnels and told me to go as far as I wanted to go and crawl in it. He did not, he wanted me to see that they were doing everything humanly possible to get these people out of the building. And when concrete falls like that, it's just, you know, it's flops on top, but so you know, it might be something that holds it up somewhere where you got a void. Right. And that void might be a life in it. They had pulled um, 15 live, live, they had rescued 15 people out of the hotel at that point. Um, one of them, um, they had, uh, you know, most all, all cases, it was, they had to go in and just mold through this concrete and, like like a dog or groundhog digging a hole. Ninety nine point nine percent of the people in the world would not, in any way, shape, or form, crawl into these places that these guys, these search and rescue guys, have crawled into. And nor should I have been in there. But I was wearing my um, my hard hat, so I made that promise to my wife and met it, so it was okay. And. We kept on, man. We stayed up, and uh, until I came back, we slept right outside on the what was the parking lot. We met up. There was a bunch of other, several other people that had come there, just you know, in the same thing. You know, they were looking for family members.